Chris Hung is a visual artist working in Hollywood. He has spent years honing his craft, working on cutting-edge projects such as Marvel, Spider-Man, Hotel Transylvania, The Smurfs, and Alice Through the Looking Glass, The Avengers Age of Ultron, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. He spent over 13 years at Sony Pictures Imageworks in look and development, as well as lighting supervision. His graduation project from SVA was an animated short called Extreme Limit, which quickly gained a loyal following that demanded more racing-inspired stories. Out of, a de de out of a desire to deliver even more entertainment and excitement to his fans, the concept for Chris's latest animated series, The Driver, was born. By leveraging the latest advancements in digital animation technology, Chris released The Driver trailer and received over a million views across the globe. His ultimate goal is to continue expressing his passion for cars and driving to e every car enthusiast around the world. Please welcome Chris Hung. Next, we have uh, another alumnus from his department, David Hahn. So David is a surprise guest who wasn't in your program. He's a freelance character animator. Most recently, he worked for Sony Pictures Imageworks, where his credits include Angry Birds, Storks, Emoji Movie, and Spider-Verse, for which he won an Annie for Outstanding Achievement in Character Animation in a Feature Production. Previously, he worked at PSYOP, Nathan Love, and Curious Pictures. He's a currently fa current faculty member of uh, his department. Welcome, David Hahn. And now the two graduated from our MFA Computer Arts program, our graduate pro program. Please welcome Ben Aguillon. He is a computer graphics supervisor at Sony Pictures Imageworks. He began his Imageworks career in 2006 as a senior lighting technical director and sequence lead. His credits include Men in Black International, Spider-Verse, the Hotel Transylvania franchise, Amazing Spider-Man 2, Alice in Wonderland, and Monster House. He earned a BFA from US UC Irvine and his MFA from SVA. Please welcome Ben Aguillon. Thank you. And finally, to round it out, uh, also from his department, Lisa Suzuki. Following Lisa's graduation from SVA, her career extended, extended her interest in layout and cinematography and feature animation. She was part of the teams to integrate 3D computer animation techniques with 2D traditional animation at both Disney on the Hercules Hydra sequence and DreamWorks Prince of Egypt Parting of the Red Sea sequence. She continued in a layout role throughout her career, including Spider-Verse, specializing in set dressing and look of the final shots. Please welcome Lisa Suzuki. And then let's bring Sarah... Uh, Sarah Zarrell back to the stage as our moderator. And once we throw it to the audience today, and we'll be around with mics after we do a little bit with the panel first, we have special gifts for anyone who asks a question during the, during the Q&A. So we're going to now turn off the sound. These credits, this is a credit to all the people who worked on the film. As you can see, all these people worked on the film. There's 11 minutes of credits. So that's how you know how many people worked on the film. So we're thrilled to have four of those people here. So take it away, Sara. Thank you, Adam. Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome, Hi. Lisa. Hi, oh, I think so. Yeah. Okay, there we go. How's it like feeling, being back in SVA? Especially, it's been a long time. Well, since I'm probably the oldest, <laughs> I graduated from the first MFA program uh, here from SVA. And it was very different. It definitely spoke to the industry of the time, but it's great to see how SVA has grown to speak to the industry that we have today. Yeah. So putting people out there who can really do the job right off the bat. Uh, it's been 13 years for me, but I was very impressed to come back and see the work of uh, our students. It's really amazing. I feel like the quality of the work has increased dramatically. Uh, very impressed by the facilities. Uh, and also got a little bit sentimental flying back and just seeing New York like from the airport. I'm like, oh my God, I'm back home. It's like, it's it's amazing to be back here. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice feeling. I think I've always sort of been connected to SVA pretty closely, even after graduating. Uh, but I've been able to see the school grow as the years go by. And I'm also teaching as well. So I get to see all the students in labs and stuff every week. Um, yeah, same here. It's like, you know, last time I was here, it was like 12 years ago, and I haven't been to back at SVA for like over, I don't know, since I, since I graduated 2001. Um, yeah, everything's very really different this time, and um, except the building's still there, everything's inside is very really different, very new. Um, all the computers are very new, very nice. Um, better than what we have at work, so you guys are 
<laughs> you guys are lucky. <laughs> yeah, you guys are lucky. We were a little bit jealous when we saw the cool yeah, toys you guys have now. Yeah. Well, I forgot to mention, but congratulations to you guys for making a groundbreaking and revolutionary film. That's an Oscar winner. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. How does it feel like to be part of the team that is now setting a different direction for 3D animation and that now everyone's like clambering just to be similar, if not better? It was, uh, it was a little bit scary at the beginning, um, trying to do something that we had never done before. Um, it was definitely a, a huge team effort, and a lot of times we didn't know where we were going. There was a lot of experimentation. Um, but I think the best feeling to describe it, it was very rewarding. It was very difficult, but very rewarding. It was by far one of the most difficult projects I've ever worked on, uh, but it's also the most rewarding. Agreed. It was extremely difficult. <laughs> uh, but the rewards were proportionate to the difficulty. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty... After the movie came out, it was kind of nuts to see the reception that it got. Like, I think we all knew that it was going to do at least pretty decently, because it's a Spider-Man movie, so you know, by default, it's going to do well like up to a certain point. But I think the critical reception just absolutely blew us away. We were not expecting it to be that good. Um, and then the whole like award season started happening and the movie just started winning like all the awards and it's it's still kind of nuts <laughs> <laughs> even after all this time that's passed. So yeah my experience on there was like the first half was pretty miserable. Like you know, I thought I worked at Sony for so many years that, okay, i done that, I've done this, it's going to be fine, I can do it. But then soon I jumped on Spider-Verse, you know, because they tried to, like what Ben said, they tried to do something new. It's too new that I don't even know what I was doing over there for a while until like, okay, I got it now. So it took me a while. Um, even though we knew the technology, uh, we know what they want, but we still need to um, innovate like new method to, uh, to come in the look to approach what we want, uh, it was pretty hard, yeah, yeah. It's pretty exciting, I think, for me especially, because I started off with bringing just a little bit of 3D into feature animation, into mostly 2D uh, productions, and here we've come full circle where we're doing this full-on 3D show production, and it's really looking like a comic book 2D world, and it just really shines that way. Also, I think it's really exciting, too, because the story is so come back around to its new place in this world, and that's really exciting. One of the things that that reminded me of was, um, if you guys were paying close attention to uh, the characters in the movie, you'll, you've, you would have noticed that they had uh, ink lines on their faces um, and their hands, any parts of their bodies. Um, a lot of those ink lines were done by hand by all the animators. Uh, those were actually uh, 3D rigs that we had in our uh, Maya scenes, and we'd be able to man manipulate them uh, by hand. So if we wanted to have like an angry expression, for instance, we'd have to like uh, manually place the ink lines like where the eyebrows are to like make furrows and stuff, and we'd have to animate them. So. Um, some of the ink lines were automated, but a lot of the character stuff was just uh, animated by hand. So just a neat little fact. And just by the way, um, in New York, we actually built New York Manhattan buildings and uh, Queens buildings and Brooklyn buildings. So we had all of the different, uh, well, we had three boroughs. Sorry. Sorry we missed Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> we just never went there. <laughs> But it's true. Besides the buildings, we're all placed for our compositions. We also did all of the trees were replaced and, and positioned for our compositions. So we have the height, but it still looked like they could be in a real forest and they were the right size. So there was a lot of 2D trickery in, in all of that. Uh, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, and the, all the methods and tricks that we use, like you guys just saw, um, they are not 
like the traditional way how we make CG features or even making like live action VFX shows. Um, that's why, like you know, uh, I myself, because I work on the uh, live action Spider Mans too. So when I jump on this movie, um, they broke a lot of roots, like like things that like, okay, I see an image, it looks wrong to me, but then when I show it to Ben, I was like, hey Ben, what are you think? No, that's right, that's a style. I was like, okay, but the thing is floating. I was like, no, that's a style. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. Let's go with it. So th there's a lot of stuff like that to learn doing this film, because um, you can see like the shadows, they have like you know uh, half tones and all that. Um, we, we we took us a while to define the look. Like okay, you can't go too much of the half tone or the uh, the hatching, or you can't have too less. Because if you have too less, then it will look like a traditional you know CGI movies. Um, so it, it's like a fine line that we have to find from in every shot. Almost pretty much like what Ben said, it's handcraft. It's like, it's like doing like a, a traditional pencil drawings. It's no different than that, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting when you get your initial render and you're like, okay, this looks like a traditional render and you work on it and you work on it and you iterate and you fail and you make some tests and you try again. You show some people, you get some feedback and then like a week later, you come back on Monday and you open the shot and you're like, wow, it looks like a comic book. It's like it's very rewarding to see it go from very traditional to to the finished piece that looks like a you know, a lot of frames, like sometimes I wish I could like print them and put them on my phone or something. Like, yeah, it's like a flipping a comic book. Yeah. How I see it the you know, the final. Well, I have one more question before I'll open up Q and A to the floor. Um, you said that there was 2D and 3D elements. Did you guys have a 2D team and a 3D team, or was it just like the 3D people could handle the 2D department stuff? I think we did have, um, I, I forget the guy's name, unfortunately, but we did have a, a 2D animator on the show who was doing some of the 2D effects. So a lot of the explosions that you saw were done in 2D. Um, I wish I remembered his name, uh, but he is like, extremely talented, and we put a lot of those uh, 2D elements into our, our movie. And also some of the uh, intermediate frames when there's like an important action happening, uh, the, when an art department that would make the stills, like a 2D stills that would go with the 3D. Well, thank you, guys. Now's the time. If you guys have any questions. A lot of questions. There's uh, there's one questions. mic on that side and one on this side, so I'll let Vincent start over right there, here. and we'll, everyone who asks a question until we run out of gifts we will get a gift. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, so needless to say, um, this film has, like, blown everyone away, and I think that a lot of that is because you know, it is something that we've never seen before, but it also has a lot of elements that are familiar to us, such as like comic books and um, street art. So how at each stage in the pipeline did you balance that breaking all these rules and doing something completely new with having that familiarity? Um, I think uh, I can sort of answer that. It was, you know, Basically, it's the vision of the directors and the produ production designers and the art directors. And obviously, all films are hopefully done in a way with a true vision for the whole thing. And we all work really hard to make that vision come true as one person. So I know that when they went to feet they decided this, this would be a feature, and they did want to go back and really hearken to that comic book look. There was a lot of visual development done. And we did learn a lot on the way. Um, you know, like I'm saying, I, I know that we had difficulties with um, animation on twos with cameras on ones, you know, and that's, uh, that's obviously an issue. And an issue that sort of went away when all of feature animation was all CG and was just doing it, everything on ones. So it was a lot of give and take during the early part of the production, and then we really got it fine-tuned, and we, I think, in all our departments could really see it. And uh, uh, they, I know that they've, writ they've written scripts to help with that, you know, to address these kinds of issues. But you always get the directors and the production designers' eyes on everything, and obviously our visual effects supervisor. And so they help take what's the 2D and make it more into what we can do as a production. And I think Ben and, and Chris can probably speak to that part of it more than I can. 
Yeah, regarding color, a lot of times is uh, simplifying and removing things that don't help the story. Um, and when we break these rules, we break them in a way that help the story or drive a point for each shot. We think about each shot individually and ask ourselves, what is this shot trying to say? What is the point that we're trying to uh, make with this shot? And basically, the rules are broken to help the story come along. Uh, and also tons of visual research. There is, There was so much visual research done for the film. Um, uh, like the selection of colors, for example, for Queens uh, uses very warm lights, and for Manhattan, they're very cool lights. If you if you watch some of the film, it's a very clear color distinction between the two places. Um, and those kind of decisions is what allows us to break the rules but still make it feel familiar. We have a question over here. Oh, keto. Thank you so much for coming today. And uh, I just wanted to say that like, you guys found, I think, um, a perfect balance between 2D and 3D design and animation with your visual, visual effects. And I wanted to know like, how long did it take to like, fine tune it? Because it must have been a very uh, time consuming process to get it to look just right. I do it. Um, I think t when they first started, they took a year, right, to do 10 seconds, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> For animation, so, yeah. yeah. So, so it is, yeah, we, we took a year to do 10 seconds in the first year. And then, and then um, even towards the end, when we um, complete half the movies, we still have some sequence and scenes that we haven't figured it out. Like at the very end, when you guys see the uh, collider explosions and all that, um, those we, we we pretty much start to look to two months before the deliveries. So I can tell you, like it's it's evolving. Like every sequence and every shots, um, if if it's in the new scenes and new new uh, new environments or new effects, every time they have a new effects, we have to figure a way um, how to um, use this two D three D comic book look. Like for example, like the explosion, like okay, how much, how 2D do we want that explosion? How 3D do we want except uh, smoke, uh, um, uh, fire, like all kind of elements? We we need the, yeah. So so all of the all, all of the all, all those elements we need um, like a specific um, directions from the you know either the visual effects supervisors or the effects supervisors going to tell us like okay the smokes uh, is going to be really thin uh, we shouldn't have too much shading then maybe just we can just do with one color and then for example like the explosion it's where we define uh, you can see the shape of the explosion we, we could we could maybe we could add outlines or some tags you know a boom right you've seen those tags so um, um, it's it's uh, yeah, so everything it's it's revolving through the process. Yeah. We have a question in the back here on your right. Hello there. Uh, Hi. I'm Markel. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for this movie. Uh, I would say on par with comic book movies, this movie is right up there with Endgame. So thank you for that. Um, so it's a two parter. One part is just. Um, I was just curious about how you went about the process of picking out like what Easter eggs and references uh, to make within the film. And then the other part was something I was trying to wrap my head around was there's a moment where the spider that bit Miles glitched twice. He gl glitched when he was coming down to bite him and he also glitched when he touched him. So from my understanding of the movie, the only things that glitch are things that don't belong. So I was just curious about that. And then um, again, with the references, what you uh, how did you go about picking the references that you uh, wanted that we actually saw on the screen? Uh, I think uh, a lot of those Easter eggs and stuff that were put in the movie, um, unfortunately, you'd have to ask the directors, uh, the directors and the producers, uh, Phil and Chris, um, because they had a, f a lot of fun putting all that stuff in there. But um, from the uh, production side, we did actually get to use some old assets that we had from other shows that we just sort of snuck in there. Um, like one in particular that, c that comes to mind was, um, there was, I don't know how to say it, but if anybody's ever watched uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, there's a machine in there called the 
slim, yes, what that person said. Yeah. And uh, th that scene when everything's getting sucked into the collider towards the end, um, there's a shot where you see it in there. And uh, one of the animators just decided to put it in there because there's just so much junk flying in. Uh, so for fun, we just put that in there. Um, and in terms of the spider glitching out, I, th I think you'd be correct in assuming that the spider is not from the same dimension. Um, I can't go any further than that, though, because I haven't given I haven't been given given any uh, information past that. So, your question in the front. Hi, my name is Becky. Thank you for your collective work. I love the movie. I was wondering, since you graduated from SVA when you did your thesis films, if you had any work with um, Tribeca Film Festival or even Sundance, if you could share with us. I unfortunately didn't attend any of those. Or my film didn't make it to either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> me, me neither. <laughs> we're, okay, we're doing okay now. So. <laughs> I think I think my did my went to a Showtime network. There's like a little thing back then, and then um, um, Autodesk Meyer. They have a international animated shorts thing that I also want that too. Yeah. We were too young to even com contemplate putting the, that much of a reel together. <laughs> Vincent has one in the back, I think. Or front. Hey. Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm Brianna. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> my I just want to say, like, with all the thank yous, like, um, just remember that there was like a ton of us that worked on the movie. We we're just like four people. So yeah. on behalf of like the hundreds of people, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thanking well, us. I mean, you still touch the holy chalice, like a kid. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. I, personally, like. Um, when looking at movies that work within the industry, especially with the computer art, uh, I, I, I really feel that like a lot of the things start looking very similar, and then Spider-Verse comes in and then just changes everything. Like The whole game is completely different, and it's extremely interesting and exciting to be walking in when that effect, when, like, when people can see this and recognize that something new and cool is actually like profitable and interesting and people will watch it. Um, and I kind of just wanted to, to know like, um, like how did you like get to the, like, <laughs> uh, like where do you think as like producers and stuff, where do you think the industry is going to end up after Spider-Verse? I mean, hopefully something similar to this. Like. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, honestly, I think uh, it's kind of a miracle that this movie even happened in the first place, that such a huge risk was taken on such a huge franchise, but uh, all the right pieces fell in the right places, the right people were there at the right times, um, primarily Phil Lord and Chris Miller, and I think, I don't know, it's, it's crazy to me how this movie came out as good as it did. I think, um, I mean, this film definitely, like, it helps the um, like the production studio to have more uh, room right now to create something uh, different um, than what we're used to seeing. Because none of the studios, like you know, they could actually stand up and say, "Hey, you know what? Let's try something." It's pretty risky for them to do that. Um, so it, it took Sony. You know, Sony Animation's been around for like you know 15 years. So it took us 15 years to do something like that. So. Uh, I hope you know this film can go on and in, you know inspire other studio. Let's do the same thing. You know, uh, I, I, guess, I guess Pixar right now. You know, and Disney is scratching their head. You know, uh, what are we gonna do next <laughs> to get our Oscar back, right? So, um, um, so we'll see. So yeah, it's, it's, it really does change. It, yeah. There's definitely a hunger for more films like this. Uh, I think Sony announced a new division um, where they're going to work with more diverse and independent different films. So th there's definitely a, a need for more content like this. So. Its success is really the, ho the real success of this film is that there'll be more vision, more different ideas out there that they'll embrace and want to produce. So. We have a question up front. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you guys. Thank you for coming here. Um, I just have two questions. One question is, 
what what comic art did you incorporate into the story? Because I noticed that the comic book story is slightly different from what happened in the story. For example, like how how Miles got bit on his hand. So like, what changed between the comic and the movie? And also, uh, is there going to be a sequel? <laughs> Uh, There's definitely a sequel in the works, so you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> you said that, okay? <laughs> hey, there's, there's, there's uh, articles out there. <laughs> yeah, there are. Yeah, they're actually around, and they're all sitting around already working. So. You got one in the back? In terms of the comic book, I think the, uh, it, it's inspired by a lot of existing comic books, but like the, the original script was uh, originally made for the, for the movie. So yeah, you're gonna see some similar things and some things that were different. Um, we also had uh, in-house illustrators that created all the um, actual printed comic books that you see during the different sections. Um, but I think that you're saying that the story changed a little bit and sometimes, you know, obviously go, going from one, um, from a book or from a comic book to the story of filmmaking, they make, they, uh, the directors make choices on how to do it for their story that they're telling. Hello. Uh, Hi. I'm sure uh, it's great working on the film in such big fi um, other films, but, um, have you guys ever experienced project fatigue? And if so, how did you deal with it, like during production? You know, <laughs> I have to say on Spider-Verse, I came on late to the show, but I came on late because uh, we needed a lot of extra help. So I came right into working long hours, long weeks. But shows in general, it's really the people you work with that make it so that you can get through it all. You know, mutual respect, great artists, uh, people who are going through the same thing, even whatever department you're in, and that really helps a lot. Um, I think at least one thing that helped us get through the production, um, for speaking for strictly animation at least, our production was slightly over a year, I think like a year and a month maybe. Um, so that's a pretty long time for an animation schedule because I think on average these days uh, animation show schedules go on for six-ish months, six to eight months. Uh, so to be, to be on this show for over a year was very tiring. But uh, I think what helped was that we knew that we were making something special. So. Uh, the entire time everybody put their all into it. Like we knew that um, we knew that we were making something groundbreaking. And after we released that first teaser trailer, um, and we saw how the whole, you know, how the internet was reacting to it, then that gave us a lot of energy to keep going. And uh, every time we, we release a new trailer, and we get you know feedback from the internet and you know, how everybody loves it, like that just gives us more energy to keep going. So that's one thing that helps. Another question in the way back. Hi, um, my name is Sean, and I'm a beginner animator, writer. Um, I had a question about how you use programs and what editing programs you use. So like, if you're recording something in Maya and you record something in an animation program, do you then transfer it over into an editing program to, to see all the footage and edit it that way? Or do you record and edit in Maya? I'm a beginner, so I'm just. Well, we have, um, we have editors who are, uh, do the editing and anim animators who do the animation separately. Uh, the animators will animate our shots and uh, play blast them, and it'll get uploaded to the server and the editors will take all the work that we've done and they'll be constantly updating the edit. Um, as to what software they, they use, I'm not sure, unfortunately. I think they use Avid. Avid, Avid okay. Yeah. And in layout, uh, we're in, we don't actually have shots yet, so we can actually um, 
provide alternates, alternate cuts, and we do a lot of our own editing right at the beginning and make suggestions with the directors and the heads of the departments. That's cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's nice. I know. <laughs> yeah, usually the edit is pretty tight by the time it gets to animators. Yeah. Right here on your right. Um, I'm wondering, uh, how was how was this storyboarded? I mean, was it handed off from a final script by, by Phil Lord, or was it like story sections created first, just general ideas and storyboard artists went at? I'm, I'm just, I'm bo mind boggled on this. Uh, well, I mean, usually how the process goes is the, the writing comes first, and then uh, we'll have storyboard artists boarding it all. Um, and then that gets handed out to uh, other departments. There's a lot of departments down the line. Um, so I'm not, I don't think we're too familiar with the st storyboarding process, but basically, at least uh, for animators, we'll see all the storyboards and see how the sequences are supposed to be played out, um, layout included. And uh, sometimes it's a good way for us to uh, reference what the storyboard artists and what the director uh, wants to see because uh, somewhere along the process sometimes things or ideas can get lost or mixed up and uh, usually will when I uh, start a shot before I actually start it I'll look at both the storyboard and the layout just where everything came from just so I can get all the ideas and understand uh, where things originated from. The story um, department, working closely with the directors and the editors, will take parts of the script and break them down into sequences, and then they'll be able to work on a s specific sequence. And they pitch among themselves and, and to their other artists so that they can make other ideas and bring it together. And then slowly it gets um, to a point where they feel like that's really what they want, and then they'll start showing to the heads of animation, the heads of layout, and go into putting it into a 3D uh, environment. That's a much better answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice because the directors are always in a place where they really want you to help plus it. They'll really ask for, you know, the animators, their, their ideas on how to act that sequence. And in that layout, how can the camera really help tell the story during that period? And then, you know, it goes down the line, how does lighting and effects really help sell that shot? We have our short filmmaker, Ellen, who has a question. Let's give Ellen a big round of applause. You like the short film? Um, hey guys. <laughs> um, so, a couple questions is, was there any moment in that production where politics got in the way and was like, whoa, 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 like, this is too groundbreaking, I don't know if it's gonna work, you know, and people were like trying to push back that creativity, and also, was it any different working with that team just because knowing some of the things I've heard about the directors coming in, like, we want no like restrictions. We want to make our own unique story. We want to do something different with that Spider-Man, you know, title. Um, yeah. Were there any kind of um, what was that like compared to other? Are you asking for dirt? <laughs> I'm not asking for dirt, but I'm just I'm wondering. You know, like as a director myself, I'm always curious about um, what works well. Like you know what keeps that team motivated, how does the direction um, that the director is coming, like, you know, when their feedback is coming in, like, how does that team feel and how does that, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but also, if there were any crazy ass, like, oh shit, I don't know if um, it's gonna work, you know, some problem comes down there into the pipeline and it's like, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, if they're like, I don't know if we can make this work, you know, and then you did pull it off because you guys are amazing professionals um, and you were like, yeah, we did this, holy crap. We, we, we have that every day, <laughs> okay? Um, every time I show something, it, on this show especially, it's, it's like hit or miss a lot of times. Uh, you thought you're doing the right thing, 
the director or the visual effects supervisor said, would say no, I don't think this is going to work. Or you're doing something like, uh, I don't know, whatever. And then it was like, wow, Chris is amazing. How did you do that? Like, I do get that kind of response. It's, this is how crazy this movie is. It's, 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 you, don't know, you don't know the goal. So you just keep experimenting every day. Um, like you said, like every day you get different feedback. And then, and then eventually you can start to get used to it. OK, I think I'm going to the right direction. Uh, you, might, you might be very confident for two months, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on fire. I can do this. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, boom, it's slapped in your face. Say, nope, this is wrong. <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? What have you been doing? Mm -hmm. I was like, um, so, yeah, that's how, you know, as, as you say, emotionally, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, someday you feel very good about it. And then the next day, it was like, wow, what am I doing here? Like, I'm not doing the right thing. So, so I think it's like every, pro every progress, right? Every, like everything else is, yeah, it comes and go, you know, ups and down, yeah. We were pretty lucky that the studio really uh, was 100% on board with going all out. Uh, and in fact, our visual effects supervisor, he would often say, if, if it ain't broke, break it. Yeah. And as an Easter egg, he was actually portrayed in the film. In the banquet sequence, there's a, a man standing up with a gray goatee and glasses. They made that special for him Aww. to be in the movie. Yeah, the other thing is um, like movie production making, you're not doing it by yourself. Yeah. So when you do something wrong, I, I talk to my teammate or talk to my supervisor and say, hey, am I really doing something wrong? He didn't, they don't even know. Or they was like, well, I'm doing the exact same thing like you do. Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, if, if you go down, usually it's not just, just by yourself. Pretty much the whole team is going down. Um, or something, or something does well. Also, the whole team is doing well. So, so you feel good about it, right? When you when you're down, you feel like okay, I'm I'm with everybody. It's the whole team is doing it together. So, yeah. We got a question way in the back, right? Uh, thanks. Hi. Um, so I just had a question on more like your process and getting from graduating SVA to where you are today. If just each of you guys had, you know, almost like a short thing on like what tricks and what sort of guidelines did you set for yourself and set yourself up for success and where you are today? Um, when I first started, it was really, really different than what it is today. And um, I don't know if anybody here is in the MFA program, but I had to write a C++ uh, 3D modeler system when I was here. And that was because during that period, if you wanted to work for PDI or RNH or ILM, any of these places, you, or R, uh, was RGA, I think it was called, um, they all wrote their proprietary software. So you had to be able to at least do some, have some understanding of that. And so because this program had that, uh, and we could really show our chops, it made a difference to help us get into um, the houses that were, were then. So probably mine was really different, but um, in a lot of ways, I think I did it like everybody else. I you know, put my reel together, and I knocked on everybody's doors, and the people I knew from the programs, and my teachers, and I stayed in touch. And uh, when I did get my foot in the door, I made sure that um, I was professional and responsible, easy to work with. And when you and that's for everybody. That's for your production assistants to your producers. Because any one of those people might be the next people that take the step up and hire you in the next job. I think my uh, my first job out of SVA was from our Unix teacher, our systems teacher. Uh, who got me a post-production job. Um, but my thesis advisor was uh, from Blue Sky, Rob Cavallari. I was like, Rob, I want to go work at Blue Sky. He's like, you have to pay your dues, man. You have to make a diaper commercial. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my advice is like, be nice to your classmate, because you don't know which one of your classmates will work in a company one day that you get hired by him. <laughs> so. <laughs> so after two years of uh, working at Quiman, we got a uh, diaper commercial. <laughs> And uh, I got an interview shortly after that, and then uh, Sony also interviewed me. I ended up going to Sony after that. Um, but after that, it was just, uh, like Lisa said, just really being kind to the people that you work with, because uh, 
when we interview people, um, the first question after the interview is like, would you work with this person? And after we finish the movie, would you work with this person again? Yes or no? It, it's, it's really important, like the relationships you form with people as you're, as you're working your way up. I think that's the general consensus is don't be a jerk. <laughs> um, so connections are very important. Um, yeah, because uh, like it was said before, um, whoever you're in class with or working with like, could be your boss eventually. Um, I mean, regardless, you should be nice anyway. Like, you should be a genuinely nice person regardless of whatever job you're trying to get. Um, but yeah, that's probably one of the most important things is keeping connections. Um, but you still have to work hard. There's no, there's no trick to get into these studios. You have to do good work and uh, just send your work into these studios. A question in the center. Hi, um, what would you say in the process of animation, making a movie, what would be your favorite part of it? The part I do. <laughs> Agreed. I've, I've been doing layout for a lot of years, and so I really enjoy layout. I think it's, you know, part where I get to be part of the filmmaking. Um, the layout department from the old feature animation starts with uh, rough layout, which then feeds to um, animation, and then animation comes back to final layout, and then that final layout feeds to lighting, compositing um, effects. So it's pretty fun to start off with helping make the ideas of what's going to happen, and then help showcase the animation and how the final shots are going to be. Over the years, uh, it has changed for me. Uh, early on, it was more about like, I want to get the coolest shot, and I want to get as many shots as I possibly can. But uh, over time, after working with many teams, uh, seeing new people come in and grow and start making their own great shots, that so far has been the most rewarding thing for me. Um, I think this is kind of cheesy, but like the, the people that you work with and interact with every day, you make some really good friends when you're working on these shows. Um, you know. When you're on a, a grueling production, you're all in it together, and you're kind of like brothers in arms, and uh, you all take away these memories together of you know going through hard times and good times. Um, so yeah, like some of my really good friends I've made working at uh, Sony Imageworks. Um, the other thing I would say is, for me personally, is when I present an, an idea to the director and then he signs off on it. And when my shots get finaled, it's like, it's a really nice release, a burden off my shoulders. Um, basically, when a, when a director finals your shot, like you're in a sweat box presenting your shot to him, and uh, when he finals it, he'll say, final, and then they'll clap for you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that is a really, really nice feeling. So, yeah. My one in the center. Uh, I'd like to start off with, I really appreciate the Spider-Man socks. Really well done, nice. Um, so I know you've mentioned that, uh, you know, a lot of the people you work with motivate you and um, just like doing a good job and seeing the feedback, but was there ever a time you got so frustrated and you had to like sort of step back and find inspiration for this project again? And uh, were there any uh, studio jokes? I, there, there must have been. I, uh, <laughs> I can't remember, um, but I'm sure there were. Um, in terms of finding inspiration again, I guess this is just going back to uh, being fatigued. Um, I think whenever, whenever I was feeling, uh, you know, pretty tired and pooped out. Um, when I've been looking at the same shot for like, I don't know, three, four weeks straight, I, I would find inspiration at looking at um, other people's work. Um, so my friend's work, I would look at their stuff and see all the cool things that they're doing. Um, and that would inspire me to do a better job. Or I would sometimes just take a, a part of my day to just watch a few of the sequences 
um, just maybe like a half hour of the movie and see how it's all coming together. And uh, when you see that, you know, as a whole, what we're making is like really cool. I think it gives you a, an energy boost to keep going. Um, and yeah, going back to when like trailers for your movies come out and like that really gets people amped up, so. I hope our guests don't have panel fatigue. We have four more gifts, so four more questions. Is that all right? Is that okay? Cool, thank you. And thank you. Let's thank Chris for the gifts, whoever got those gifts. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you, yes. Uh, hi, my name is Drew. First of all, um, I just want to thank each of you for this amazing work of art, and I think we all really appreciate all of the work that went into it, and I just want to thank you guys, because it's amazing. Uh, my question is, uh, what was the end goal uh, that you had in mind when creating this new visual animated style, and where did the idea come from? That's a director question again, yeah. I think. Uh, um, no. It's really uh, uh, from the top. Peter. Darn. <laughs> I mean, I, I, can, I can say from what I think and what I've read is that um, this movie started off with uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller being approached by Sony to make a, a Spider-Man related movie. And uh, they... They sort of had, um, you know, Phil Lord and Chris Miller had worked with Sony before on uh, Cloudy. And I think coming into this, like, they sort of had a lot of leverage. Um, so when Sony approached them to make this movie, they said that they'd do it under one condition. And that was that if this movie was like a crazy looking comic book movie based on Miles Morales, and uh, Sony went on board for that, and I think that was their their main goal is just to make a movie that looks exactly like a comic book. Like, how do you translate a comic book as best as you can into a, a movie format, um, and you know, make a personable story, a great story? Um, yeah, that's that's my two cents. <laughs> we have one in the back, right? Uh, hello, my name is Skylar, and I want to know, um, out of the 12 principles of animation, what is the weakest one that one you have um, trouble with and you struggle with and got better at? Out of the 12 principles was of animation, what was the weakest one that we had yeah. in, in yeah. the entire show? Yeah. Or like what was the more, most challenging one, right? Uh, what would help is if I remembered all of the 12 principles. <laughs> um, I can say just uh, broadly, generally, um, the style of animation that we were going for, it was decided early on to have this show on twos. Um, well, I, I shouldn't just say twos, I should just say stepped animation. Um, and this decision to go that route uh, has many ripple effects on the other departments. Um, so when we actually started rolling into production and you know making shots, we thought we knew what we were going to do for the entire show, but we kept on running into complications because of the style that we went for. Um, and that was a very, very painful process. <laughs> I think we had trouble with that throughout the entire production. Um, we got better at dealing with it as we went along, but um, throughout it was always a possible issue that came up. Um, yeah, and I think that's, I, I know that's not one of the 12 principles, but, but that was the toughest thing that we dealt with animation-wise. That was the same for camera work because there was no motion blur, and uh, it was high action. And um, uh, this isn't part of the, the principles, but um, it was a lot of doing work where you're trying to set up cameras or do the camera work to things you're not seeing yet. So you might have an explosion. You know it's going to be an explosion, but you don't actually have the effects of the explosion in your scenes yet. So there, there, there was a lot of, um, I think, going back and forth 
between departments more so than, than a, a normal feature production has. Yeah, the variable frame rate had impacted us all the way uh, to lighting because um, also one of the decisions not to have regular lens quality like depth of field or motion blur made it very difficult and we had to come up with alternative techniques to guide your eye to specific areas or lots of headaches <laughs> or to prevent very heavy strobing so that was definitely the most interesting challenge I think. I have the last question on my side. Hi, um, I'm a sophomore in the BFA computer art department. I just wanted to ask, is there any kind of like advice that you could give to up and coming animators, something that you wish someone would have told you when you started out at SVA? Uh, I would say focus on the uh, artistic side instead of spending too much time with technologies or the tools because um, like we went to issues like when we hire new um, like graduates or uh, like freshmen, um, all the new lighters or compositors or the, all the new artists, they, they tend to, they come in, they, 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 they focus, they concentrate on their tools a lot more than, than um, actually what they're looking for. Like for example, like, um, I have a lighter, they, they come in, it's very smart, it's, it's, you can, you can, use our software pretty well, very well. But he doesn't really know the, the, um, the basics of doing lighting shots. So, because um, that's something that, it's something you should um, start early to, to learn um, how to light a shot or how to light for movies, how to light in animations, um, how to do character lighting or environment lighting. Uh, it, it's not about the tools. You know, tools just help you to get there. It's like driving a car, right? But, but you still need to know what you want to do. Uh, like, what makes things look good? That's more of a question uh, for them. Like, like, like Ben and I was just talking on the way here. We, uh, we, we, we're thinking we should, uh, like even our studios, you know, we have a lot of trainings in-house. And they tends to be uh, usually they are like software training, like compositing training, like, like uh, we have a, a software called Katana, we Katana training, but we don't really have like a lighting, lighting training. Like, okay, I have a character here, and how do we make it look good? You know, light is light, you know, uh, but where to put that light? Uh, it's more important than, you know, oh, I know how to use the tools, I know how to create lights. That's easy, I can teach you that, but I cannot teach you where to put the lights, and that's what I want you guys to contribute. Uh, it's mostly, uh, we need your artistic skills. Uh, that's what we need. Um, yeah. Here's the last question, Senator, unless you wanted to answer that. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, um, this is a really cheesy answer, but uh, I think just in general, be more confident in yourself. Sorry, where was the question asked? Who am I talking to? Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would say be more confident in yourself. Um, you have to, oh, this is so cheesy, you have to know that you're capable of more than you know. Uh, and you have to really truly believe that. Um, because all the things that you do outside here start from your head. So if you go in with that kind of mindset, um, doing whatever you do, um, you, you know, you have a positive outlook and like it affects your work positively and you can start something small. Uh, but once you do something small and you do it well, you can keep doing it over and over like, and there's a snowball effect, you gain momentum. Um, and yeah, it's, I, th I think, I would have liked to have heard that when I was a student because I had a lot of uh, trouble with like self-confidence um, in my work. But I think once I started to accept that, once I started to know what I was capable of and like kind of embrace that, um, it started showing up in my work more and like it just like snowballed and I just sort of, you know, pushed through like a lot of boundaries that way. It's really cheesy, sorry.
I just want to add on top to your questions because um, you guys know John McIntosh, I guess. Um, I remember one time I was in the office. Um, it's my second year here. And then he wants me to take this watercolor class, uh, uh, charcoal class. And then everyone, everyone else in the third year is like using Meyer, you know, soft image back in the day. And after effects, I was so excited, you know, to jump into the technology so early. I was like, no, oh, give me a Maya class. I don't want that watercolor class. And then, and then he was like, no, trust me, you need it one day. And you need that pencil class to every, whatever the traditional drawing class, you need it. And then Spider-Verse came. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, now, okay, I know what you, I know, I mean, my John, what John said back in the day, that was true. Uh, it's, it, it's, that's more, I think that's the true value, being an artist, instead of like, you're good at the tools. That's just a skill set, but uh, yeah, so. I think just, um, this is a very ex exaggerated example, but I, I like to use it. Um, so like Spider-Verse has like a lot of abstract th things going on. We. Uh, decided to do some like different styles for animation and like the the look of the movie. Um, I think it sort of ties into with what you're saying is that you have to have all the foundational skills. You have to know what you're doing and you have to master all of that before you go into um, you know something abstract. And the perfect example is like Picasso. Um, you know, a lot of people look at his work, uh, and his famous work is like super abstract, and people say that they can just, you know, look at, they they can just do the same thing by like making these like weird shapes and stuff. But if you look at his like early artwork, like that guy was a, a master. <laughs> like he he was extremely skilled at what he was uh, drawing or painting. Like all this stuff was all all expertly made, and only when you reach that point can you start going in other directions. Yeah, principle is always the same. You know, softwares can change any time. You know, even even between movies, uh, like in the early years at Sony, we switch software every every different movie. So you can you can keep up the you know with all the technology, but what you can keep up is the principle of doing arts. Yeah. Hi, my name is Miranda. I'm actually a cartooning major, and Hercules is my favorite movie. It actually inspired me to come here, so thank you. Um, I also wanted to say one more thank you to your movie because um, it impacted the people of color in the movie. Like my friend Leo, he was always like really insecure about it, but when he saw the movie, we kept tapping on him, and every scene Miles was in, we're like, oh my god, that's you. And he actually had a question he wanted to ask. He wanted to ask, how does Dr. Octopus and Aunt May know each other? And also, um, since it was a big theme in the movie, A Leap of Faith, I was wondering, like, personally, as artists, what was your leap of faith to lead you to here or somewhere in the career as an artist? Good. Great questions. Yeah. The, the Doc Ock question is, unfortunately, another question that uh, the directors would have the answers to. Um, I had the exact, I mean, everybody working on the show was all just, you know, we did double takes when we heard that line. Um, but, you know, we don't have the answer to that, <laughs> unfortunately. And the directors are really um, comic book aficionados. They really do dove deep into the, into the stories or the, or the originals. So uh, I wasn't. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, they put hints everywhere. Like if you watch the movie carefully, like like in her lab, like the lights are octagonal, or like the way her hair is. Like there are so many clues throughout the movie. Like I watched it like a hundred times, and I, I find something new every time. What was the second part of your question? What was your leap of faith? Uh, sort of. Um, I was on the career path of an international relations major with an emphasis on third world economics when I was in high school. But I also really loved art and drawing. And I would do it all the time. And it was about the process of doing that work that I really, really enjoyed. And I found that that's 
process, being able to do the process and loving the process, no matter what comes out of it, is the part that really made me understand that I would rather be in art. And well, now being here at, you know, at the UN, I should have maybe thought about the other two, because that was obviously very important and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was uh, moving to LA on a very short contract and hoping that it would work out after that. Uh, I don't think I had a leap of faith moment. <laughs> I sort yet. of just, yeah, yet, I guess, yeah. I think I just always loved art since I was a little kid, so I, th I think I was just always on this path. Um, but if I do have one, I'll let you know. <laughs> Chris, uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> Um, I always treat art as like a medium to me for some reason. Um, I like for me myself. I love cars, so I I always stop in an object or something that I really like, and then use the medium to express that subject that I like and transform it to something else. I don't know that that answer your question, but that's how I see art myself as an artist. Um, then just using a medium do really well because um, it's all about expressions to me. Art is expression, right? Expression is something you love. Um, that's pretty much it for me, yeah. Well, we have, well, that's it for the Q&A. Thank you so much. Um, my last question is, did, how big of a Spider-Man fan were you guys when you started? Really big, actually. I know you worked on a lot of Spider-Man uh, movies. It's like Chris, the goat. Yeah, I worked on last six movies. Yeah, since Spider-Man three. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, it's well. I mean, after the third one, I was like, you know, uh, I can do something else. But, but, but one, but every one of them, it's getting more interesting. Um, and that's why I don't mind keep working. You know, like I thought, I'm done. You know, um, even I, I'm not. A, you know, for me at work. Uh, like Ben asked me too sometimes, like, hey, you prefer doing VFX shows or do animated shows? Um, I'm more towards the VFX you know, side, but then, but then they were like, yeah, you don't like, uh, you don't want to work on Spider-Verse? And then I look at it, I was like, well, you know what, it's pretty cool. Okay, I'll come on. <laughs> so so every, every Spider-Man movie have their own, have their thing that makes me want to jump in. Like, like last far from Home and Homecoming, I worked on those too. And, and, and the story, just amazing, and, and the, the, the visual, when I look at the concept, I was like, wow, I don't even know how to do that, but you know what, I'm in. <laughs> so that, that's how I, you know, it's not necessarily Spider-Man, it's just, it's just maybe it's a, such a high, big franchise, and they intend to do something crazy and crazy, like even something bigger every time they try to do it again. So I, I bet, I mean, you know, for, for Spider-Verse 2, it's gonna be something very different from this one, so. Yeah, well, we'll see. I might be going on that, too. I can say I'm a much, much bigger fan after Spider-Verse, especially after seeing the effect it had on my kids and friends and family. I, mm -hmm. I, I was completely sold on the idea. I, th I think, um, I mean, I, was a, I, w I don't want to say like I was like a huge Spider-Man, like diehard fan, but, you know, I did watch the TV show, the cartoon, when I was a little kid. I had... <laughs> action figures, I had some of the comic books. So, you know, for me to actually work on this movie was pretty, pretty mind blowing. <laughs> um, and to see that it did so well is, you know, it's just the cherry on top. Um, yeah, it's kind of surreal and it'll never be normal for me. <laughs> Yeah, I've always really liked Spider-Man, the story. So it didn't really matter, it's not, that it's, um, I'm not really big into the others. <laughs> it was, sorry, it was probably just made for me, for Sony. So it was great, and I love this film mm. and how much uh, it's brought to the audience, I think, and the following, so. Right, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, everybody gets Thank you, let's give a big round of applause, and thank you, Sarah, for being a terrific moderator.